Hello and welcome to another episode of Healing Art After Hours, where I upload videos of live Zoom creative workshops from my Healing Art Happy Hour meetups. I'm Shauna Robeson from Creating Space Coastal, and in today's video I will be introducing Neurographica Inspired Art, a simple but powerful method of drawing while tapping into your mind's potential. Handouts for this introduction to this topic are available for download at my shop at creatingspacecoastal.com. And as always, happy creating. So welcome to Introduction to Neurographica. Now, as a disclaimer, I am not a certified teacher or trainer of this. I've not gone through, I think it's a nine month course. So I'm just touching really lightly on the, the, the science of it, the psychology of it. Uh, and I'll give you some resources where you can go do a deeper dive, you know, go down the rabbit hole, if you will, on learning about it. I think it's an incre incredible subject, and it's also just a wonderful tool to add to any of your art. So um, it's called different names, neurographic art, neurographics, neurography, neural drawing. So you may see it if you do a search, you search, you know, a number of different ways. Just be aware of that. Neuro, of course, is related to nerves or the nervous system or the brain. And the neurons are the cells within the brain that transmits information to the nerve cells and the muscles or gland cells of the body. So that's the neuro part. The graphic part, of course, is relating to drum roll art, right? Graphic. Okay. So that's where the name came from. It's a psychological method that was developed by, and I'm going to probably destroy his name, so I, I apologize, pa Pavel, uh, I had it, I had it actually in a moment, but I, uh, I think it's Pis Piskarev, 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 I think, so Pavel Piskarev, I'm sorry, Pavel, if I'm destroying your name, um, who, he, who has a PhD, and he just developed it in 2014, so it's a fairly young uh, method. And you can find more information at the website, neurographica.us. And the summary of it is it's, it is easy. It's easy to learn how to do. And um, it's meant to switch on or activate the neurons in your brain. So it basically tries to connect your subconscious to your conscious. And the intention, of course, is in healing. So relieving stress, sol uh, problem solving, reprogramming some of our limiting thought patterns. So it's really a therapy, a therapy, basically. So again, I am not a therapist, so, and I'm not trained in this, but that's the goal of what this is about. And I think it has a cool way to do it. So it's not only fun, but also healing. And of course, I find that I find all art to be healing. So, but this has a particular flavor of it that I, that's really fascinating. And the other thing that's really cool about it is the actual art looks similar to the neurographic network in our brains. This is what they look like. So there's these clusters as these lines, these neural lines connect. You see these, these little clusters. So here are some examples from this website of, these are not ones that I did, but these are available here. And some of the statements that they talked about is, is using the pen as an extension of the brain body connection to tap into that subconscious, like I mentioned, to clear blockages and working through stress and anxiety, trauma, relationship issues, uh, to harness the ability to find solutions to problems and motivation to solve them. So all of these things are going on behind the scenes um, to create positive changes that occur through the process of drawing. And they say that, you know, they're often immediate and life changing. So uh, the goal is transformation that happens at the neural level. And also, you know, the result is quite beautiful. So it's sort of a win, 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 I think. These are some examples of ones that I did. I think I, this black one was the first one I tried. So that, you know, it's really easy to do. Uh, and there's an algorithm of how to go about it, which I'm going to be talking. But, um, but you can see every single time you do it, it's going to look different. And you can even incorporate it if you like tangle art, you can incorporate it as a as a tangle design. Or you can add it to other, you know, sort of build on it and create some other artwork. So this is a great one for October, my little Halloween guy. <laughs> this is this is a little a dragon layer 
that's little dragon eggs. So that's my interpretation. You can make your own. <laughs> anyway, so you can go from either just the basic algorithm or you can use it as part of an art design, the, the technique. The basic supplies really is paper and a pencil. If you don't have anything else, um, that will, will be enough. And that's the beauty of this is it doesn't require any specialized art supplies. Also helpful is a small coin, like a dime or a penny. So if you have one of those handy and you're gonna follow along, grab that because I'm gonna show you how you can use that to help with the process. But so basically paper, any kind of paper, I of course use my regular card stock because I oftentimes use it um, as cards or something like greeting cards or something like that. So I use my card stock. It's smooth and I like the texture of it. So that's what I'll be using, but you can use anything. It really depends on what you wanna do with the result. If it's just for the therapy aspect and I encourage you just to really focus on the process and not the output, then you can do it on anything. But if you do think you might want to have it as an art project or something that you want to give or, or something like that, do it on good paper, you know, because the, <laughs> my best ones have turned out, I, you know, I did it on some scratch paper and then I really loved it and I really wished it was on quality paper. So if you think you might want to have it as an art piece um, to give, they do turn out more beautiful than you, you know, even imagine. Um, go ahead and put it on good, some good quality paper. And uh, any kind of writing implement is fine. You can even do it on, if you're going to be using for coloring purposes, watercolor, you can do it on watercolor paper. Just make sure you don't use a delicate tipped uh, marker and you wanna use a permanent marker and you wanna not use it too delicate tipped because that watercolor paper has a little bit of tooth to it and it can damage some of those delicate fine, uh, fine felt tip marker. So a Sharpie is fine. Uh, something that's durable and, and permanent because of course when you add water then it could smear. So if you're going to use any kind of water medium whether it's watercolor pencils or watercolor paints then just make sure that you're using some permanent pen like a Sharpie. Uh, the other thing that you know you may want is if you're going to do coloring whatever you want to use for coloring which is fine. I'm going to be demonstrating not today, but down the road, I'm going to be talking a little bit about using watercolor pencils. So and I use these water, these water pens, which are basically a brush tip, and then they have a water well. You put water straight into it, and then you can squeeze the water and it comes out to the brush. So if you have those, you know, or if you're interested in that to blend your watercolor pencils, if you already have watercolor pencils, you can have. Um, you know, maybe get some of those, or else you can just use watercolor brushes. But basic, all you need is a pencil and paper. So the final thing is set an intention, have something that you're thinking about. And maybe it's something that's really been weighing on your mind, maybe something that you're stressed about, could be finances, health, something like that. So that's the, the final um, supply is something that you want to process mentally. Um, and that's all you need. And again, why do we practice it? Well, you can practice it because of the beauty of it, or you can practice it because it is a transformative art that helps reduce stress and problem solve and achieve goals in areas of, you know, a lot of things like stress, pain, injury, anxiety, overcoming obstacles or limitations. And it also improves aesthetic intelligence, which is the ability to look at, to, you know, be aware of beauty of something or be able to have more of an artist's eye, maybe be able to pick up on, oh, is that more a, a pleasing to the eye or not? It actually improves our, our awareness, our ability to discern, uh, to discern that. So that's an interesting little element of it too. There's a lot of symbolism in it. The edge of the paper is Basically, if you think of the edge of the paper as sort of the connection to the outer universe and everything on the paper is our subconscious or internal awareness. So, so that edge of the paper represents that, that connection or the, the line between those. The sharp edges are, or the corners are blocked energy and conflict. And so we go through a process of smoothing those out in this process. 
And that's where the smooth edges come in, which is flow of energy or resolution, roundedness. And there's also connections between the lines and those can represent neuron connections. So the more lines that are there, the more connections can maybe represent how much of our brain we're stimulating to get going. So this is all from what my interpretation is of what I can find online. So again, I didn't take the nine month course. There's a lot more to it. And if I, you know, maybe I'm all wrong. So take it with a grain of salt, but, um, but it's based on what I gathered from my research. The basic algorithm. Step one, set your intention like I talked about. And that could be, you know, something that's just really been weighing on your mind. When you're trying to sleep, that's the best time to figure out what maybe you need to process because that's usually when we quiet down, when everything, the lights are down, the sounds are down. That's when we, our minds wake up and start wanting to work on the things that, you know, that we're, that we're stressed about because all the other distractions that have kept us from focusing on those things have been silenced somewhat. And now, now the quiet sort of invites those, those repetitive thoughts. And usually whatever those are, are some things that maybe are unresolved that you maybe need to address. So in, in some cases, when we go to these healing art activities, we say, okay, now we're putting all of that aside. We're gonna stop thinking about all of the day's craziness and all that, right? And we're just gonna really dive deep and focus on our art form and let those go. And this is sort of a, a different approach. This is saying, oh, let's really think about those things when we're, when we're stepping into this because we are going to be resolving them subliminally. So, so in this approach, we actually go, okay, let's think about those things that stress us out the most. And there are ways of kind of an analyzing the art to sort of gain some insight, which again is beyond my scope. But um, but there may be ways that you can interpret it as well. Seeing how seeing you know what the lines represent. Does it look does it look kind of an ang angriness to it or something like that? So you'll be able to see kind of get some ideas um, insight about where your head is when you're thinking about these stressful things by looking at the art. Okay, the second part, get it to go to the next one, okay, is to create the neural lines. And I'm gonna be demonstrating all of this, so don't, don't worry. But basically with your intention in mind, you're going to be using your left, your, or I'm sorry, not, I mean, I shouldn't say left, my left, because that's my non-dominant hand, but you're gonna use your non-dominant hand. Now I've seen a variety of ways to do this and I'm gonna demonstrate a couple different ways I've seen, but this is the one I feel like, um, you know, was the intention of, of the, the origins when I went to that original site. So this is the one I'm gonna demonstrate now or that I'm gonna talk about now, but I'll be demonstrating all of these. So with your non-dominant hand and a marker, you're basically just going to let your hand, oh, I got a, um, can everybody just make sure you're muted? I'm getting some echo. And let me see if I can figure out who's not muted here. Okay, unless you had a question. If you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself, but um, but leave it muted if you're not talking because it, it sometimes gets a little echo. No, okay. Um, so with your non-dominant hand, you're just basically like going to intuitively draw these random lines or kind of could be scribbles and whatever just your intuition says. You can just follow it along the paper. There's no plan. There's, you're not trying to look, design a specific thing. You're not supposed to have anything in mind about where you're going with this. You just do random scribbles around and you can you know, go from one edge and just wiggle around until you get to the other edge, or you can create circles or spirals or anything. There's really not, a, you know, a rule, whatever you're inspired to do, because you're just letting your intuition, you're letting your subconscious, you know, move you. So, um, and I'm going to ha have a little bit of a, a tip to how to be less intentional about that. So I'll show you that uh, with the coin when I'm doing the demonstration. So, but the bottom line is you're not trying to control the design. 
you're just letting it go wherever it makes sense in that very moment. The third part is to add some geometric shapes, whatever inspires you. You don't have to if you're not inspired by doing that, but there is meaning actually in, in geometric shapes, and that's part of the psychology of it, and I don't know, I don't understand all the pieces to that, but I did find this really interesting website um, at Shutterstock, of all places, that talks about the psychological meaning of shapes, and I think how they're used in like marketing or or art or ways ways to just instill a certain um, mood or something. So it is interesting how these different shapes can uh, create or have meaning around psychological meaning or mood meaning. Um, and so incorporating those in there, they're also li like little worlds within a bigger world too. So they can add that. But again, I'm not gonna try to go into the deep dive of what those are. But just add something if they're inspired. I tend to like the round shapes. So um, they don't have to be exactly round. You don't have to use a stencil. You can just do it by hand. If you want to use a stencil, you can. But I just feel like it's more organic if you just draw it by hand. Donna, are the um, shapes also to be drawn in your non-dominant hand? Is it all in your non-dominant oh, no, thank the Good question. No, you don't have to do it in your, with your non-dominant hand. <laughs> that would definitely be more tricky. So good question. Just that first part. And, um, you know, really the, you know, the right hand stimulates the left side of the brain. The left hand stimulates the right side of the brain. So when we use both of our hands, we're actually, that's another way of stimulating more of our brain cells to get them activated, to be helping us with processing this. But at this stage, it's more about, you know, getting that shape on there. And, and you know, the rest of this is all with your normal dominant hand. It's just that first part, I think to maybe just be less in control of it and activate that other side of the brain. So good question, thank you. Now, so I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Does it uh, help if when I'm draw drawing, close the eyes? Uh, you can certainly do that. Just make sure that you have something protecting your, your surface of, you know, be behind the paper, because you're probably going to go off road a little bit. So, so yeah, I mean, I would say try it that way and see, see what you think. It's certainly, I mean, that is certainly a way that we're less likely to try to control the process. So I think that, I, I, I think that sounds like a good idea. Again, because I'm not trained in this, I don't know what the, his answer would be, but I think that sounds like a great way to be, you know, make it more random and really tune in because you're tuning out the other, the other yeah. distractions. So yeah, right, right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great idea. Uh, the other thing you can do is now at this point, you can say, oh, you know, I like the idea of adding some lines here or here. You can just incorporate more lines where maybe you feel like there should be whatever's in whatever your instinct tells you to do. You can add more lines at this point too. with your dominant hand is fine. And then after you've completed your shapes and your lines, your neural lines, then you start rounding those connections. And this is, this is the part that's, I mean, it's really relaxing, the process. It's very, it's sort of like the, you know, Zen tangle or doodling where it's a repetitive process that, and, and then you just get into the focus and it, in and of itself, it's really relaxing. And, and soothing, but the symbol of soothing out those those sharp lines, those those connections that maybe are representing conflict, you're actually creating these soft, smooth, energy flowing connections. And so it not only symbolizes resolve, but I think at the same time, while you're creating these symbols of resolve, you're actually resolving. And so maybe you know, after this whole process, you'll feel more clear clarity about a question you might be posing, or maybe you just feel more relaxed and calm about whatever the stressful element is in your life. But that's the next process. And finding all of these connections is kind of fun because it's sort of like, where's Waldo? <laughs> because I think, okay, I got them all. And then I'll go, oh wait, there's one more over here. 
So really enjoy, you know, enjoy the relaxation, a little like knitting for those of you who enjoy knitting. For me, knitting is not relaxing, but for those of you who it is, you know, you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> it's kind of this, you know, you get in this flow and the zone and here you're actually creating that flow. And you can see from this project, this is before I added any of those smoothing out the cur the filling in those connections. And you can see how much more polished this side looks than this side. I mean, I got a little kind of a whoop de do here. Maybe I'll keep running that along and make another line. You know, there's a little bump here. Maybe I'll bring a, a line out here. So as we go through and clean clean this up a little and fine tune it a little, you know, we start getting more and more polished look. And I see a dog here, like a maybe a Great Dane fate, you know, head. So maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'm wanting a puppy. Maybe I'm missing my puppy. I don't know, you know, there might be something to that. But you'll start to see some things in your art that you can, you know, maybe analyze and go, oh, what does that mean? Hmm, you know. All of mine are really smooth in this one, but maybe you have some zigzag jagged edges that really look like a lot of maybe you're angry about something. So just um, kind of see what does this look like to, you know, how does it make you feel? And you can embellish, you know, by adding some color, you can add more lines, maybe some circles or dots or little you know, loops or anything like that. You can go as far, as long as you want, you can keep playing with it. And then of course, back to that analyzing, you know, look at it and see what is the emotion that you feel now looking at this end project? What kind of emotion do you feel like maybe you've released in the process? What answers have come to you about whatever it is you addressed while you were doing it? you know, did, did, it, did an answer pop up to you about whatever, like maybe you were trying to figure out a solution for a financial issue or whatever, and then suddenly you had an idea. So see if something comes to your mind that maybe didn't cross your mind before. And if that helps you to move past whatever that block is in your life and celebrate, um, celebrate doing the process and celebrate the outcome because it's gonna be pretty cool. I mean, every time I've done this, it's always been pretty, a pretty, uh, it's been a great experience, but I've also really liked the outcome too. And, and you may or may not, you know, some people are just like, oh yeah, I feel a lot of anger in there, but I wouldn't wanna hang that on my wall <laughs> because maybe it elicits a lot of anger, but look at all that anger you got out and you're released. So, you know, let it do its healing and then see what you get. Um, you can also just do it for fun. You can, like I said, you can make it a tangle that you add to your art. So incorporate it in like a, like a tangle art, then tangle type of thing. Uh, and that's fun too. So you can really go from zero to 60 of like just pure therapy process to how much of it do I want to really make artistic? So here are some of the official based on this website guiding principles and I can't explain all of them, but I'm just going to list them off. Um, shape integrates thought states coalesce into meanings. Problem is born of thinking mind of the thinking mind solutions have bionic quality. Meaning, I think that means like there's a there's a like a biology biology element to the solutions of thinking. I mean, I don't know if I understand all of them, but again, that's why you take the nine month course. Harmony leads to satisfaction. The universe is at the tip of the marker. Every question has a graphic solution. The drawing canvas has no bounds. The world is made of shapes and lines and drawing is easy. So these are some of the guiding principles. And again, this is the website if you want to dive deeper into that. I also put on here some other resources, some YouTube links and things like that. If you get the PDF, um, just some people that have explained it and I thought they were helpful. Some of them were a little different. On the tanglepatterns.com, 
where I, if you came to my Tangle month, they actually have a link that talks about this too. And the woman I think is, is um, I think she's Russian or I maybe, I'm not sure. But, but she, but her YouTube channel, some of them she's talking, but there are a lot of them that they're just doing the art and they do these collaborative drawings and they're very fascinating. So check out Anna Romanenko's YouTube playlist because um, there's some interesting ways to utilize it. And I think, you know, she's certified. There's also a link uh, to an interview with this um, Pavel Piskarev. See, I spelled it wrong. That's why I couldn't pronounce it right. So I'll have to fix that on my first slide. My apologies, Pavel. <laughs> All right. Um, and if you want a copy of this, this is the updated one. Like I said, go to creatingspacecoastal.com to the shop there. And if you did get the old version and you want the updated version, I think you get three downloads so you can try your old link and see if you get the new one. If not, let me know, reach out to me and I'll try to resend the link to you so you can get the updated version or also send it to you directly. We'll figure out a way to get it to you. But, um, or if you like the other one better, that's fine. You know, that's fine too. All right, let me go ahead and stop that sharing. And then I wanna go ahead and get some demonstration. The fun stuff. Any questions before I start that? Let me let me stop there. Let me um, start recording. All right. It still looks dingy to me. I have to figure out this lighting because it's quite brighter to me and it always looks gray to me, but maybe it's my screen. I don't know. But so I will be working on that if it looks dingy to you guys. But but I still think you can see what I'm doing. It would be bad if I was trying to do some bright colors. OK, so really the basics is a pencil. Now, I would say use a marker. I like the marker better, but you could just use a pencil. If that's all you got. I'm going to use just a, a fine extra fine point Sharpie, and then a coin. I'm gonna show you that, that method. Um, actually, I'm gonna demonstrate the methods real quickly on here, and then I'll actually do one. So a couple of things that I've seen is the left-handed. I've seen a lot of artists not even talk about that. So, um, but I think that, I mean, that seems like part of the psychology and part of the therapy part of it. So I thought it was important to include that. But if you're if you're finding yourself wanting to control the marker, I like that closed eye option. Another way you can do it is if you if you put the marker at the edge of the paper and then and then you follow the coin. So wherever the coin goes, you just keep going. And sometimes the coin turns around, you never know where it's going to go. And, and you just go all the way to the end of the page. And that's one line. And then you just you can start at any other point And then just, again, follow that coin until you get to the end of the paper. Now, you can try to steer the coin. I mean, if you if you do kind of go to the left, it's going to go to the right. But if you just relax and just push and not try to move the pin, the pen, the marker, it'll, it'll on its own sort of veer around and you can get some interesting marks that way. I've also seen other people just using their dominant hand and just not even starting from the edge and going to another edge, but just starting from one edge and continuing to just like one continuous line that eventually ends at an edge. So you can do it that way as well. And you could also do that with your, with your non-dominant hand, you know, just kind of like let it go wherever it wants to go. And eventually it'll, you know, you'll get to, maybe I want some, 
Negatives, okay, and then I end up at the end. So there's, so you can do it whichever way makes sense to you. I tend to like to start at the edge and then go to some other edge. Um, but you can see there's just quite a different look depending on what you're doing. So, or depending on what you're, you know, how you feel you wanna go about it. I can't really speak on, I think there's benefit to doing your non-dominant hand regardless of whether you do the more kind of scribble or whether you do the meandering method. I think there's definitely benefit with doing the non-dominant hand because again, that's gonna trigger and fire the right brain Whereas your dominant hand is going to trigger the opposite or well, okay, depending on which one's dominant for me, the right, my right hand is dominant. So it triggers my, it fires my left side of the brain. And then my left hand will get my right side of the brain fired. So I think it's a good idea to do it at least with your non-dominant hand for that part. So I'm going to go ahead and now just do the whole process and I might even do it a mix. Maybe I'll do part of it this way and part of it the other way. So I'm just, and I like having paper under, um, first of all, it's a little bit of a cushion under the, this is just a pad of, a pad of paper. So it softens the under, um, it softens the surface a little bit. So I just think it writes a little bit better than on a hard surface. So, and then also it protects from my meandering. And I might even try the whole, um, I'm gonna try it three different ways. I'm gonna try it all different ways. So I'm gonna do one line where I'm using the coin. And I'm not holding the pen real tightly. I'm just gonna, I'm just lightly holding it so it can really go wherever. Okay. All right, so that's, was that a question? I think I heard where is the pen i'm sorry the coin when you're moving the pen where exactly is okay the coin is in front of like like where the pen is going let me do it from the side so you can see so the coin it, you basically the pen is follow the markers following the coin so wherever the coin goes the marker has to go so if the coin goes off to the side, then I have to keep pushing the coin with the marker, basically. So if I don't keep it there, see, it's just wherever the coin goes, I have to basically stay behind it. So I'm still pushing that coin until I get to the edge. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, now I'm gonna do it. I just did that with my, my dominant hand, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna do it with my eyes closed and I'm not gonna use a coin obviously because I can't follow the coin with my eyes closed, but I like that idea. So I'm just going to place my marker on the edge and then I'm going to close my eyes and just kind of see what happens until I feel it get off the paper. Okay, so that's another way. And then the third way, like I said, is they just use their dominant hand. I'm still gonna use my non-dominant hand because I like that. And then I'm going to just get on the paper and then I'm just going to scribble around within the paper, never touching the edge until I'm done. And then I go off the paper. So I did a little bit of a variety there. So anything goes. Okay, so that's my neuro line. Now, um, I have my own intention in my head, so I'll, I'll worry about that. But I'm, since I'm teaching a class, it's really hard for me to focus on <laughs> my intention right now. So it's just really gonna be training, but you could write it down on the back of the page, or you can write it down on the page, you know, like on a page next to it. So you're kind of keeping that in mind. If you have an intention, I'm going to be talking about adding incorporating words into these two, where you can add the intention into your artwork. So we'll get to that another, another day. But for now, I'm just trying to get to the basics. 
So this now the next step is okay. Do I want to add some geomet geometric shapes to it? Again, I'm always I'm always really digging the roundy things. So and I see some round shapes already in there. So maybe I just want to incorporate um, what I have going and just make that into more of a circle. So I'm just going to bring that around. It's kind of an oval shape. And then I can just draw maybe a circle there. And I don't know, maybe one there. No, no rules. Now, I like to do it in odds because I know that's visually appealing to do things in odd numbers. So whatever shapes I make, I try to make them in odd numbers as a design rule, but you can do it whatever inspires you. Okay, and then the next step is, is there any additional lines or things that I want to add to this to, to give it a little, um, you know, maybe there's, I feel like, okay, it's really empty over here. Something's bugging me. I, I want to add something. So I like to add the little duplicate lines. I don't know what to call them. I don't know, stringy fibers where I kind of follow one line that already exists with a second line. And I feel like this line wants to continue. Like there's this little stopping point. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that line out. Um, the messier the line, the more I want to maybe add some of that duplicate line, like this one. Maybe I want to add a little scribble there. It kind of look like more like fibers. I like when the fibers are kind of wrapped around the, the shapes a little bit. So I might just make all of those ones a little fibrous. So at this point, there's not any rhyme or reason. I'm just saying, hmm, what do I want? You know, and then there's something that I think would add to it, then I'll add to it. Like there's a little outcropping right here. I feel like that really just wants to go off the edge. <laughs> so. There we go. Um, so you could really just, it's in whatever your intuition tells you to do. Okay. Why do I want to make this shape? All right, and then the next step is to round out those connections. So anywhere that a line crosses another line, you just smooth it out. Like making a little U. And that's really all there is to it. After I finish that, I can add more things or I can color it or I can embellish it however I want. But those that's really the, the crux of the process or the basic algorithm. Maybe I make some lines thicker. Sometimes it's helpful if you use a smaller marker for this part, but I don't have, you don't need to. I had a little, I don't know, something flipped out. So I just completed that line. So you can clean it up as you go, whatever makes sense to you. And what I love about this is, like I said, you don't have to have a lot of art, special art supplies, unless you, you know, want to. 
you already have them. So if you're on a plane, maybe you have some anxiety about flying, this would be a great project to do to keep your focus off that or to resolve the anxiety around it, I should say, since you're supposed to actually think about it when you start. But you'll notice that more and more, especially this part, the stress or whatever it is will just melt away. And you might even forget you're flying. And suddenly you land. It's a great exercise for when you can't sleep at night. You wake up in the middle of the night or you just can't fall asleep because your mind is wrestling with something that happens to me a lot. My brain wants to be awake at night, especially those times when I really have to sleep. <laughs> it seems like the, like the more urgent my need to sleep is because I have something important the next day, the more I can't sleep. So I can get up and, you know, with the pad of paper, it can be a small pad of paper. There's no size requirement. And just Doodle on yourself to sleep, you know. Now this little outcropping here, I'm just gonna take it around and make it a its own little Now, some of the challenges is depending on the paper you're using, if you're using a Sharpie on some real porous paper, like maybe printer paper, Sharpie tends to bleed. And some of these details can be real tricky. Like you may only need to set the pen down in that corner and just hold it and it'll fill in the, the edge. So, I don't know, I felt like I wanted some bubbles right there. So <laughs> you just let yourself go and see what see what happens.
And you know, there's not really a whole lot more to say about it at this level. Um, so yeah, I'm just quiet because it is very meditative. <laughs> I'm getting into that zone of relaxation. And I hope you are too. It also, you know, it really builds skills for other types of art because, you know, that manual dexterity, that fine motor skill. So I think it's a great starting point if you're interested in moving into drawing or like doodle art. I think that this is a great starting point because I think it's the simplest. Way to really develop those. Those fine motor skills. So next year I'll, I'm planning on a different order of teaching these classes, and I think this should be the first one. Now, I'm going to be talking about incorporating color. You don't have to use black marker. You can use different color markers. You can use multiple color markers. So I'll be demonstrating that further down the road.
The longer you go, the harder it is to find open intersections. <laughs> like I said, it's kind of like where's Waldo. But that's good for your brain too. Searching for patterns. Well, notice I'm kind of flicking them. If you're watching, you're probably doing your own thing. But if you struggle with um, the where you're smoothing it out, sometimes it, it's because you're holding the marker there, it fills up and it can be a lot wider than the line that's going away from it. So I just do some flicking and release some of the pressure on the marker to narrow the stroke as I go to blend it with that line. I hope that makes sense. But I'm just trying to make it look like it's kind of melting into the line next to it. And I find that it takes a little practice. So rather than it being like this where there's a hard there's a hard line or you know distinction between that center part so i just try to feather it out a little bit and just soften that connection and if i can't do it then i just sometimes i'll make that line thicker and then i'll just release it off down down the road a little bit so a little tip If it's if that's bothering you. <laughs> Otherwise, like I always say, just don't worry about it. <laughs> Let it be. You're still benefiting from this whole process, regardless of the of how it looks at the end. The visual aspect is, is the least important part of it.
Just when I think I'm done, you know, there's always another one. <laughs> like, oh, I think I got them. And it's like, oh no, one more. And it's okay. All right, I might have got them. 
Usually when I come back to it later, I'll find more, but I'm gonna move on to my next step, which is just adding some embellishments, um, playing around with them. I don't know, I think of them as bubbles, maybe, or oh, a little coupons. You know, I like circles, so I incorporate a lot of circular elements to mine. I need to learn more about that psychology of the circle, but <laughs> okay. I think this is where the aesthetics come in, you know, are there ways that, you know, what is it, how does it make you feel, are there things you want to incorporate, a touch here, a dab there, you know, this is where you can really get your creative side to the project. Um, I, you can even do tangle patterns within some of these areas, you know, that makes sense to you.
All right, we're coming up on 8.30 and I'm hoping that there, there are a number of show and tells for tonight. So I'm gonna do this one more thing. I don't know, can't resist. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to let go playing with it, which is a good thing. It's a good problem to have as obsessions go. Okay, and I'll just let it go there for now. And then next time I'll maybe add some color to this project, play around with that a little bit, and then show you some other ways to incorporate neurographic technique to your art. I'm gonna go ahead and pause my, stop my sharing. And I, oh, one more thing I wanted to say, when you're done or, you know, when you're at a stopping point, you know, just rotate it around and see, you know, see what different things come to you because one direction it might speak to you. Sometimes you'll see certain patterns or maybe even objects or things that are in it that you want to incorporate and have fun with. So just play around with the different directions and see what, see what it, what kind of emotions it elicits, see if you come up with any more solutions. All right, let me go ahead and stop the share. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Healing Art After Hours. You can download materials related to this topic, including PDF notes of PowerPoint presentations at creatingspacecoastal.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you found this content helpful and join me for the next video here at my Creating Space Coastal channel, where I hope to inspire you to create space in your life for fun. Thank you.